Hi, hello. So first of all, I would like to thank you for looking at my video blog. And this particular video blog is going to completely concentrate on, you know, the kernel parameters. Why are they so much critical for the Oracle database? I'm sure, you know, you must be finding the same uh, topic in my blog as well. That is at oracle.com. But still, this particular video is going to explain you a scenario wherein I'm going to just change one of the parameters that we have discussed so far in the blog. And then, you know, you will better understand, you know, yes, if we change something in the kernel parameter, there is definitely an effect of your current running database. So that's what we are going to prove with this particular video. But saying that, please go through the complete blog to get the complete knowledge on the kernel parameters, list of the kernel parameters, why are they very important? And if you have something wrong, what happens and what not? But because you're already on my video blog, I will try to give a complete glimpse of whatever I have given in my blog that will help you, you know, uh, to get some overview before I directly step into and speak about, you know, one of the parameters, why is it not working? What should be the value, etc., etc. So coming to that discussion point of view, yes, we must have been installed so many databases uh, on the Unix platform so far. So uh, I will be taking an example of uh, one of the Unix flavors that is Linux and 64 bit operating system. Uh, and on that, for example, if I'm trying to install my Oracle software, definitely I would refer my Oracle documents to identify what should be OS level prerequisites that I have to set up before I start running that run installer executable. Is it not? And one of them is, you know, kernel parameters that you set on the OS level. Yeah. So we would just blindly copy and paste the kernel parameters that Oracle suggests us and the values that Oracle suggests us. But you know, why should we actually give those numbers? Do we have any mathematics or science or, you know, any reason behind those values given by Oracle? If you have given just that thought, this blog will actually answer you what it is exactly. So we are going to see that anyway, but before I dive directly into the exercise to show you a wrong parameter, kernel parameter, how does it actually affect your database? Before I start that, I'll just give a glimpse of what this particular blog means in my website, that is orskill.com. All right, now let me actually open the blog, which is here, and then I will be showing you I'm sure these are the list of the parameters that you would basically set when you, you know, uh, go and uh, before you install the database software on the Linux platform specifically because I'm on Linux as an example for you. So, so for this, if I would have to give a glimpse, anything starting with FS means that it is about handling files. So everything about handling files is something which is prefixed with FS for the kernel parameter. And this particular parameter will speak about asynchronous, how many maximum of asynchronous IO operations can be performed on all the files on the operating system. And this is the maximum count. And how is it defined? Definitely the blog will actually explain you. And next, yes, this will actually tell you how many number of maximum files that the operating system can handle, can make it open. That's what this one will deal. And very importantly, this is very important. Anything which is prefixed with kernel is something about the resources on the server. When I say resources on the server, it includes CPU, memory, you know, disk, everything. And specifically when I speak about SHM, because you see out of all these three, SHM is common. So when I say SHM, that means it is about shared memory. So these three things will speak about the shared memory out of which SHM ALL, that means shared memory allocation and SHM max, that is shared memory maximum and SHM MNI. So these are the three parameters that you set basically for the Oracle database. Let me tell you why is this, this and this used for. So starting with SHM ALL, it is the maximum allocated shared memory that the server can use apart from the processes that requires the Unix to run. For example, for your Unix server to run, definitely at the background, you know, uh, the root processes will be running, which will be for your time management, which will be for your, uh, you know, uh, it can be for your firewall, it can be for your TCP IP, it can be Ethernet adapter, it can be anything. 
apart from those which are required for your Unix platforms to run, what are the programs that can maximum gain the shared memory access on the server? That means, for example, if you have an 8 GB RAM on your server, definitely, if you want to use 7 GB RAM for the other programs like Oracle to use, you can give that 7 GB here. And SHM Max will tell you what should be the maximum size that each shared memory can have in the physical RAM. That means if you have a program that will occupy, you know, 20 GB size, and if you only give SHM Max as 10 GB, that means to run that program, it will create two shared memory allocations in the physical RAM. And SHM NI will tell you how many programs can how many handlers can basically have the permissions to access the shared memory. So anything, any process that is running on the operating system basically will go and gain shared memory access from the physical RAM. So at the maximum 4096 program related handlers or the processes can basically go and gain the access on the memory. And yes, that's what it is. And SEM is something which will be speaking everything about the semaphores. As you guys might be knowing already, semaphores is nothing but the locking the memory component for a particular process. So to explain you a little more in detail, because it will not be you know complete if I don't tell that. So uh, when you are speaking about the shared memory, that means one physical RAM being shared by multiple processes on the operating system, definitely when each and every process want to go and dedicatedly occupy some memory, Definitely there should be some locking mechanism to that memory area so that no other program can access the same shared area to run its components. That is what we call it as semaphores on the Unix platform. So these are the you know parameters which have four different you know uh, parameters which will define what are the maximum number of semaphores to be set and how many sets to uh, set of semaphores that we can have on the system. Everything will be speaking about this kernel parameter. So just to say you as you know, as we have locks inside the database, we have semaphores, which is on the operating system front to lock the memory components on the physical RAM. And net, everything starting with the net will be basically for your network components like TCP uh, protocols, because, you know, Oracle database is much used by the application tire only through the network that is through TCP. So having this network related settings also very important and this IP local port range specifically tells you that any program that wants to connect to the server can only speak to 9000 to 6000 sorry 65500 port numbers only anything less than 9000 should be completely used and anything that is specified less than 9000 should be actually given appropriately to what port number it has to connect so yes, that's the reason as in the blog, as I said, all the Oracle port numbers are always less than 9,000. You take any Oracle software installation, for example, listener, you know that it will be using 1501. If you, if you have installed OEM, definitely you would have used all, you would have seen all the port numbers used are less than 9,000. It will be at the maximum of 7,000 to 8,000. That's it. Oracle doesn't use it uh, above that because it says that local port ranges should be from 9,000. That means all the specific programs that run on the operating system should be less than 9000. That's how I correlate it. And R is to receive some packets. I mean, what should be the maximum size of uh, receiving socket size through the TCP? This is in bytes. And uh, write is something what should be the maximum size of socket memory that I can send through the TCP IP from the server. These are the things you know, you should be very familiar when we are setting up the kernel parameters like this. So the rest, the blog will speak about the rest of the things, but still what I'm trying to explain is let us take one small example of kernel parameter called SHM max and let us execute it and see if I do not set this SHM max parameter as Oracle advises, what happens? Let us see that. So let me connect to my server and then we will execute it there. So as you see on the screen, I have a server where I have my Oracle 12C database installed. So I'll be using that server. Uh, for this exercise, uh, let me actually set up the environment variables of non CDB. I have CDB and non CDB as well. So I'll just connect to it. And just to show you as an example, I would just say SQL plus slash SSDBA. It would actually redirect me to the SQL console. 
saying that connected to an ideal instance. And meanwhile, I wanted to generate a duplicate session with the root user because I wanted to play with, uh, you know, kernel parameters for you to exercise, isn't it? So that's the reason I need root access. And let me show you first of all, uh, what is the value of SHM max at the moment here. This is the maximum value that I have set. So when I say this is the maximum value, what is the maximum size? I mean, what is the size because it is in bytes. So let me show you this size by calculating it simply like this. So I would just say this one divided by 1024 and divided by 1024. So I'm sorry. So it should be this one divided by 1024 divided by 1024. So it is one gig. So there is one gig of space uh, that basically has been given here. So let me actually see here, you can see connected to idle instance, right? Now, before I started, let me actually change this SHM max value to very, very less value to 10 MB. So let us say that. So let me open it etc slash sysctl.conf. Now, if I say here, I will just copy paste it and I will hash this value. And I wanted this value to be as small as 10 MB. I will show you why I choose 10 MB is what I'll show you. But 10 MB is equivalent to I have the numbers here. So this is the equivalent to so many bytes. So I'll paste it. I'll write it and then I'll apply it. So says CTL, we know that to apply the config, I mean kernel parameter changes, it should be hyphen P. All right. Now I will show you something very interesting. Now just say SQL plus slash sysdba and see what happens. Can you see some error here? Before when we actually uh, when the SHM max value was one gig and you had tried to connect to SQL plus you are able to connect to the SQL prompt without any error. That means it will allow you to start it up. But now as you see on the screen, you see some error here. But do you know that this error is because of SHM max. That's the beauty. So now can you correlate now see by seeing this error, will you be able to identify at all that it is because of the problem with kernel parameter? No, there is nowhere a link to tell you that SQL plus is unable to load because of the smallest or a bad kernel parameter that you have given. But the just it says as an error that TNS lost contact. Now, let me actually put this put this back. And then I'll speak something about it. And uh, to tell you my Oracle database SGA size is approximately around uh, 500 MB, I hope so. So what I'll do is I'll have the kernel parameter value now to uh, let me copy it again. I'll have the kernel parameter now value to 100 MB. So before I speak about what is happening now, let me speak about showing you with 100 MB and please make sure uh, as I said, my current database SGA size that I have given is more than 100 GB, sorry, 100 MB. So let me write quit and I'll apply it. Now reconnect. So reconnect to SQL plus, will it connect? Let us wait and see. Now, as you see on the screen, there is no error. I have corrected the value and that's the reason there is no error. But this is very, very, uh, you know, interesting to see that it is not telling us the reason behind, you know, this error that is the kernel parameter. This will be the side effects. And please remember uh, why you got this error. When I analyzed, I found out that the program that SQL plus needs, the size of the program that SQL plus needs to occupy or to actually occupy the shared memory size, that one single set requires more than 10 MB of size. That's the reason the SQL plus could not actually get a shared memory allocation on the server. That was the reason this error. It doesn't mean that your database is down. It means that your SQL plus background process could not get enough space on the memory. That is more than 10 MB is what it requires. But because we said maximum size of a single shared memory that we can have is only 10 MB, it failed. And now because it is 100 MB, it's, it is successful. That means SQL plus has got the memory access. And now if you say startup, 
because my shared memory max is 100 MB and my SGA size is 500 MB or something like that, do not think that your SGA will basically doesn't start up. See here, approximately 500 MB is my SGA size. Even when I gave 100 MB as the maximum size, how did your SGA start it? As I said in the block again, it will be now picking up five different memory components on the server and it will be non-continuous memory structure. It will also call non-contagious memory structure. If you look back to Oracle documents, it will say that SGA can start up with a single memory segment or non-single memory segment with non-contagious segments also. So now if you see, though your SGA size is 500 MB, because you gave SHM max as 100 MB, it will be having five memory components occupied from your physical RAM. So that means five semaphores will be there and it is non-contagious. When you say non-contagious, the performance of the database will be slower. This is also another point that you will have to actually give a close look when you are doing a performance tuning. It will not be, you know, as simple as straightforward for you to go and, you know, uh, you identify this something on your server, uh, alert log file, nothing. It has to be manually given a look and see and whether it is fine or not. Hope this is very much interesting for you and definitely I hope that you give a go or try with other parameters also try to change them and see whether the behavior is fine or not so thank you once again for watching my video hope you liked it so if so please like the video and subscribe with us you will be informed with all the regular updates that we will be updating in the website stay stay with us thank you